Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm sorry this is slightly delayed. Um, I did have to finish watching F1 qualifying and then that got delayed further because of a red flag. But I'm here, I'm here to talk about the Charles because I've had a great two days. I've had a great two days watching Chelsea. Um, the men, the men. I could, I could say a lot actually about the men um, because West Ham away, 12.30 kickoff, it felt like this is a bogey game. Like, you know, just in the past where we've had games with West Ham where I've, you know, 21, 22 springs to mind and how that crumbled everything that we had built up till that point in the season. Like, that game for that season, we lost everything. <laughs> We started to tumble quick. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the last game we were top of the league, um, etc, etc. I always contribute the downfall to West Ham away in 21-22. Um, but the way that we just took care of them quite quickly and it was the way that we, the goals all came at the perfect times and it felt like we had killed off momentum at the perfect times. The early goal in the first half, the goal mid-ish way through the, the first half to get to two and then the, sh the third goal straight away in the second half to kill it off it was just perfectly timed um and I could go on and on and on and on and on I don't think anyone had a bad game maybe Fofana but you're chucking a centre back at right back and it's the same thing that happens with Axel where you're chucking a centre back at right back like <laughs> It's not gonna, it's not gonna be smooth sailing um, because that's not what, it's like when you chucked Levi at left back, like it just doesn't, you get me? It wasn't awful, but you know, um, I mean, that's two assists and two for Sancho, first of all, um, to, to knock off. Two goals for Nico, again, fantastic. Proper strikers goals as well. A goal for Cole, which I think was needed. I think he didn't have the best first half. Um, I feel like he's, maybe it's just the fatigue coming in from, from last season. I mean, played so much and, you know, having to, to play in the summer um, too. But he, he's taken a bit of time to warm up this season. He's not been great. Uh, maybe by, you know, the assists for, for Nani at the Wales game. He's not really had a clinical game yet. Um, first half he didn't look great, but getting that that early goal, second half, I hope it does his confidence a bit of good. Um, very unselfish from Nico as well. I think Nico last season would have shot, would have would have tried to go for the hat trick, um, and and he didn't. He laid it off, and it wasn't the perfect laid off laid off ball, but he still laid it off. Cole still got the goal, killed it off quickly, and that was that. Um, I would have liked to, to get the goals up slightly, but I think it was just about managing the game at that point in time. You know, um, when you start making subs, the game's going to change anyway. I think it's just ridiculous, to be very honest, that we, we get to bring... We get to bring Joe Felix and Christopher Nkunku off the bench. <laughs> just saying that out loud is ridiculous. No wonder everyone hates us. Our bench of riches... <laughs> And we're doing all of this, and I, I say this, like, it was, the narrative changes when it comes to Chelsea. When City did this to them, it was, oh, City are champions, blah, 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 blah. When Chelsea do it, it's like, West Ham are shit. Why does that, why, why did they play shit? Because we made them play shit, we exploited their weaknesses. We're doing, we're, the performances are starting to, to click, and... I just want to say we're doing this without a right back. We're doing this without a right back. Our, our right backs need to sort of fucking fit this out. Um, we're doing this without a right back. Lavia is not fit yet. You know, there's there's still players to come into this team that, that would slot into this team quite quickly. And the performances are clicking. The performances are clicking. We've We've had some shaky defensive moments. And I always said it was going to take a bit of time going into the season to, to let it click. Pre-season was rough, yes. The Inter game was where I started to see things click. And I think 
maybe acknowledging the fact that our our fullbacks bar maybe um vega aren't really suited to the inverted role maybe mark at times like mark is your one where if you're gonna play inverted you you play him but you can't do the inverted thing if you don't have a you know a proper fullback um on your opposite side and we don't really have that and i think the way that we've adapted quite nicely to it's the change we made at bournemouth where i think we we brought in toss in um and then we chucked for fun out right back and it, it calmed things down and it, it was almost like the opposite had happened today like we brought axel on took for fun off and it calmed things down again like it, i feel like whenever a center back comes on at right back for a sub performance it weirdly works but when they start there it doesn't work i don't understand it but um yeah i can't really say anyone really put a foot wrong sanchez maybe had one or two shaky moments where he got slightly lucky but i think robert sanchez has been i have to quietly say it he's you know set pieces have been something that in the past for us i've always looked a bit shaky we've never had a keeper that has felt confident enough in, to, to command the box. And just in the last maybe two games, um, just because they're the freshest in my mind, he's been very commanding in his box when coming for crosses, making sure that, you know, he's he's mainly catching, <laughs> he's mainly catching any um, crosses that come in now. It's maybe the occasional punch now, but he's starting to, to get there. And I think, I do I don't know what it was last season that had him so shaky and it didn't ha it didn't work but it just it seems to work quite nicely right now and if it is going to be that he's the prime keeper and then Jurgensen's the the cup keeper then I'm fine with that because you know unless anything drastic happens I I don't I'm actually not mad at it I think both keepers can can work themselves into a bit of form and um i think sanchez is already there and my battery has just gone up um who else anyone oh moises caicedo how could i forget the one performance i genuinely wanted to give all of his flowers for oh my god moises caicedo moises caicedo I can't stop it because this man deserves so many flowers that he is never going to get because no one wants to give him his flowers. He deserves so many flowers. That's why you spend a hundred million pounds on midfielder. That is a 100 million pound midfielder. Yeah, we overpaid. But Lord have mercy had Arsenal gotten him in January of 2023. I don't want to think. I don't want to think because no words, no words for that goal because that, oh, oh, the clinics he has been putting in, I have no words. I have no words and, you know, some people had said it's because Enzo wasn't next to him, but he was doing that with Enzo next to him too. And I think it worked today between the two of them. Um... Enzo still doesn't look like his his old self under was it under Potter um that that time when we had brought him in 2023 Jan for Jan 2023 when he'd come in and you know he had his he, he looked miles above the rest um I think he still needs to find that part of him again but god have mercy Moises Kaiser I can't stop it how did Arsenal not buy him how how did Liverpool let us get him? To be fair, he refused to leave his hotel room to come to us. But um, it was wow. I um, one day he will get his flowers, and I hope that day is soon because Moises Caicedo, you are the one. You you are why we bring twenty five out of retirement because you are worthy enough to take that shirt and make it your own. I have no words. I've run out of adjectives to describe Moises Caicedo um, and the way that he's part of the, the leadership team now. Oh God, oh, I'm going to be so insufferable. I'm going to be so insufferable 
y'all had your fun when he had those first two stinkers when he joined but he's bedded in now and he looks so oh. you know what it's wild when a 100 million pound midfielder doesn't you know look like he should be playing center back because he actually looks like a 100 million pound midfielder but i'm not sure arsenal fans know much about that oopsies anyway um i get to enjoy my weekend i say that i've got to watch f1 tomorrow so i'm not too sure i will but chelsea you've rocked my world both teams won two away clean sheets in a row now by the way for for the men which is massive because we could barely keep away clean sheets last season and that's two in a row now which is huge um like i said the defense is tightening up a little they're getting used to each other and we're now scoring goals i thought we couldn't do that under potch <sighs> but apparently it was a bad idea to sack him i whatever um I guess we play a cup game on Tuesday now, which I think I'm actually off for. Um, I've got nine days off in a row. I'm not used to this, so I'm going to take it and run with it. Um, so I guess I will see you for that. I think it's Barrow in the cup and it will be, I will be able to watch it because Sky. Um, so I will see you guys on Tuesday. Up the gels. Have a great weekend. It's been, it's been fantastic. Um, I'm going to go and <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I don't know what to do with myself when we win because I'm so happy, but I'll take it. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Follow all my socials down in the description. Blah, 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 blah. Peace out. Up the chels.